Chapter Twelve: What to Do with Doubt. Hello and welcome to Steps to Christ in Song. Today we're going to look at the topic of what to do with doubt. There are many reasons for us to think that we can doubt. Um, there are things that are hard for us to wrap our minds around. For example, there's little microscopic organisms that even scientists find it difficult to understand and explain. There are wonders everywhere that are difficult to, for us to even think about and beyond our understanding. And so, why do we find it difficult to think that in the spiritual world that there are things that are far beyond our understanding? Really, the difficulty lies within the narrowness and the weakness of the human mind. We're talking about our finite, finite mind dealing with the infinite God. In the Bible, we see, and also in nature, a revelation of God's existence, of His divinity. And I believe that if we put our full trust in that, that it will dispel all doubt. But before we get too far into the topic, I'm going to just ask Kara to lead us in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, you are such an amazing God. You are infinite in love, in wisdom, in power. And compared to you, we finite human beings are as nothing. But despite your greatness, we often do not trust you. When we don't understand your word or your plan for us, we allow doubt to spring up in our minds. But Lord, we want to have complete faith in you. Please take away our doubts and give us your spirit to help us understand your word. Help us to trust your infinite wisdom and increase our faith, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you're a new Christian, you may sometimes have questions about your new faith. Or you might wonder if this Christianity stuff is really true. You're not unusual. In fact, it's not uncommon to have hard to answer questions about God and the Bible. There are many things in the Bible that are clear and easy to understand. But there are also some things that defy human reasoning. This shouldn't alarm you because the Apostle Paul exclaims in Romans 11:33, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. This fact shouldn't discourage you from seeking out God. On the contrary, it should encourage you to know that the God you are seeking is much more greater than you are. In fact, you'll be finding out new things about Him for the rest of eternity. So don't panic if all your questions are answered right away. Be assured, God will reveal Himself more fully when you're ready.
Wow, the words of that song just inspire me with awe and reverence for God. The way that his power and glory described increased my faith in his wisdom and in his ability to take care of everything that I commit to him. Kara, you know what's helped me to not doubt the love of this immortal, invisible God is that when I was lost, he gave me a map, the Bible, which has given me a sense of direction in my life and also taken away the doubt from my life. Rio, I wanted to ask you a question. Have you experienced what it means to be lost and lose your direction through doubt? Well, I have an interesting experience when I went to Disneyland. Um, my parents and I went to Disneyland when I was six years old. Mm -hmm. and, and lots of people? Right, there was lots of people because it was summer break, right? <laughs> and everybody's lots of people trying to get in. And before we went in, my parents told me to go to the top of the hill that was right in front of the entrance and wait there when I, if I get lost. Mm -hmm. So they had a plan. Right. Just in case you get lost, there's a landmark on top of the hill. Mm -hmm. It was a landmark, exactly. And it was kind of funny. Well, now that, now that I look back, it's kind of funny because as soon as we went in, yeah. I got lost. Oh boy. There was lots of people. It, was, yeah. it wasn't even funny. Yeah. People were pushing and pulling each other, trying to get in. But anyways, after about 10 or 20 minutes, wandering around, crying, and just oh, that's terrible. so terrified, and it even, more, it even scared me even more when, when I thought of you know, not being able to see my parents anymore, mm -hmm. and something like that. Yeah. And it was really hard, and it felt like it was like about two or three hours, or even wow. like all afternoon, yeah. even though it was only 10 or 20 minutes. Yeah. But anyways, and after that, I finally realized what my parents said or what par my parents told me to do. So you, you forgot about the landmark. You were just looking everywhere, the last place you saw them, and you didn't think of going there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I was panicked. Yeah. And I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I remember that, I just ran there and, but, but there they are, you know, it was, they were there already mm -hmm. and waiting for me. Mm -hmm. It's same thing with God, mm -hmm. you know, we get lost. We always get lost sometimes. And that hill, that landmark, is like Bible. Mm -hmm. Bible is our landmark. Mm -hmm. And God gave, gave us that even before we, get lo we got lost. Yeah. Have you ever found in the Bible for yourself personally um, that you found times when you doubted and the Bible helped you? Oh, yeah. Well, oh, these couple of years, mm -hmm. there were thoughts in my mind like, is there really God? Mm -hmm. Is there really uh, Jesus? Or is there really such thing that was happening in the Bible? Because look at nowadays, and it's so hard to believe it because there's a lot of sin going on and mm -hmm. crime and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to think that way. But, but when you look into the Bible and you start reading how Jesus lived his life, mm -hmm. it just make me feel that it's, he's real mm -hmm. and God's real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we can see that even in our little things, mm -hmm. we doubt so much, but that just distract us mm -hmm. from not believing God. And that helped you to get rid of the doubt that you had in your heart. Right. Yeah. Just yeah. simply by reading the Bible. Wow. Wow. That, that helped me too. It was the Bible that gave me direction and sense of purpose in my life. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing your story. One thing that's clearly taught in the Bible is that God wants to spend the rest of eternity with you. That's why he makes the basic knowledge of the plan of salvation so clear that even a child can understand it. But this doesn't mean that these simple truths aren't profound. The Bible speaks to the most basic human needs, while at the same time, it gives food for thought that even the most intellectual people will be challenged to understand. You see, spiritual things are spiritually understood. Speaking of God, it says in 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 12, His Spirit searches out everything and shows us even God's deep secrets. And God has actually given us His Spirit, not the world's Spirit, so that we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. 
Maybe the reason that even children can understand spiritual things is that they haven't shut out the Holy Spirit. The next time you study your Bible, open up your heart and ask God for His Spirit to guide you. Open my eyes that I may see Glimpses of truth Thou hast for me Place in my hands the wonderful key That shall unclasp and set me free Silently now I wait for Thee Ready, my God, Thy will to see Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my ears that I may hear, Voices of truth thou sendest clear. And while the wave knows fall on my ear, Everything false will disappear. My God, thy will to see. Open my ears, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare love with thy children. Isn't it amazing to think that an all-powerful God wants to show us some of His glory? But imagine if He were to show us everything about Himself. I think that would undermine our need of Him. God will sometimes ask us to follow Him even though we don't fully understand the big picture. We don't exactly see where that path is leading. But that's okay. God asks us to trust in Him, to put our faith in Him because He will see us through. Sharon, why is it that we often doubt God when we don't see the full picture? Have you ever experienced anything like that? No, Mr. Lemon, I have. I've felt that way when I heard the story about my uncle and my dad when they went to the army and they were drafted in Korea. Mm -hmm. And my dad and my uncle, they both said the same thing. They said, you know, we, we're not going to hold a gun mm -hmm. and we need to go to church on Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So they stood up for their faith. Yeah. And... As they were doing that, you know, they said the same things, but the results were different. My dad, he was beaten and tortured and punished and just always hurt. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, my uncle, when he was beaten, he wouldn't feel it. Or right before he was beaten, somebody would come in and say, oh, you can't harm this guy. Yeah, so his torture wasn't as bad as the torture for your dad. Yeah. And as I was thinking about the story, mm -hmm. I was thinking, why is, why is God doing that? Yeah. Like, why do they go through things like that? Yeah, like, why does my dad go through something so hard? Right. And my uncle, he comes out with no pain. Right, it doesn't seem fair. Yeah. yeah. And I question that so much. But as I think about it more and as God showed me more through the Bible, mm -hmm. he said that, you know, He gives us trials that we can bear, mm -hmm. and it might not seem fair, but everybody's different, and God makes it fair for everybody. Mm -hmm. And there's a wonderful promise in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, mm -hmm. and it says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, mm. but will with the temptation make a way to escape. That's a wonderful promise. Yeah, and... As I read it, it changed my life so much that, you know, we doubt, we question, we can't mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. But God says that 
he gives us trials that we can bear. Yeah. And he has a plan and he's, he's loving and just God. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful thing I like about the Bible is just that promise actually gives us a, a sense of um, purpose and meaning and, mm -hmm. you know, in a difficult situation when we have doubts. Yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. Thanks, Sharon. Sometimes the Bible seems confusing because deep in our hearts, we don't really want to know the truth. I mean, knowing the truth makes us responsible to do something about it. And if there's a sin that we're cherishing, it may blind us to the truth. When we want to know the truth, God's Spirit will open our eyes. And Jesus tells us in John 7:17 7, that if anyone wants to do his will, that is God's will, he shall know concerning the doctrine. We can know for sure that God is true, and the greatest evidence of this is our personal experience. You see, when we truly give up our sins to Christ and accept His perfect life in place of our own sinful lives, there's a peace that we receive that is unmistakable. So in times of doubt or questioning, that memory of the sweet peace of forgiveness is the best evidence that God is true. And remember what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13:12. Now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. When Jesus comes, everything will make sense because then we will see clearly.
know the words of that song, weary soul without gladness or comfort or rest, describes a soul in the path of doubt. And further on in the song, it shows how doubt turns into joy and peace. This comes through accepting the peace from the Father above. You know, Robbie, even Christians have a hard time and end up doubting. And let's face it, I mean, there are a lot of things that we don't understand. And I know that you come from a, a, a long line Christian family, very strong Christian family, with a lot of um, pastors and church leaders in your family. And it's a, probably a big question, maybe an unfair question to ask you, but have you ever experienced doubt in your life and in your family? You know, we have. I remember when I was a really little kid, we moved over to China to be missionaries. And my parents were setting up a missionary training school in China. Mm -hmm. And that's really difficult considering that the government is against religion. So we had to go underground basically to do these types of training. Mm -hmm. So my parents were just trying to start the school and they were having a lot of difficulties. Mm -hmm. And soon they found out that the government had heard what they were doing mm -hmm. and they heard through the grapevine that the government was going to kick them out of the country. Mm -hmm. And that would be really bad because if they were kicked out, yeah. they wouldn't have been allowed to come back into the country at all. Mm -hmm. They, you know, wouldn't, and their work would have been majorly compromised. Yeah. So they had to quickly leave. So they left and went to Taiwan. And there, my parents got a little bit discouraged because all my dad was doing there was doing language studies. Wow. And he couldn't um, do any of, the, any of the front line mission that he wanted to. You know, mm -hmm. this wasn't your normal missionary work, just sitting and going to class every day to learn Chinese. Right. You know, and he got discouraged. He wasn't sure exactly where the Lord was leading him. He knew he had led him to Taiwan, but he mm -hmm. wasn't sure why. And mm -hmm. he didn't, he was beginning to doubt a little bit. Right. Temptation as, to go home, mm -hmm. just leave yeah, all this. They, yeah. He just wasn't sure what was, what the big picture was. Yeah. And then after being there for a while, um, we moved back to Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And there things started to, to come together for mm -hmm. my family because my dad worked in the office working for China from the outside. Mm -hmm. So he would call China, he would make visits to China, mm -hmm. and he would, he, because he had lived there in the past, mm -hmm. he was able to work way better. He knew people, he knew some of the language, yeah. and he was able to um, be a better worker for God because of it. Mm -hmm. And the picture was you know, painted even more beautifully when he moved back to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And there, my dad was the conference president. And the office is all in Chinese. Mm -hmm. And I still remember him picking up the phone and talking in Chinese, reading Chinese papers, writing in Chinese. And if he hadn't had wow. that time yeah. before when he was in Taiwan doing that language study, yeah. he wouldn't have been able to spread the gospel like he was doing now right. in Taiwan. So God had this big picture that I didn't notice and my parents certainly didn't realize. But because they trusted in God, even though sometimes doubts came into their minds, if they kept on that track and followed God, we, he, they didn't have to worry because God had a way bigger picture yeah. and He was in charge. Excellent. So He prepared the way. He prepared the way, yeah. yeah. It's a yeah. great story. You know, we have many uncertainties in our lives and our minds tend towards doubting when that happens. One of the disciples of Jesus, Thomas, is known as Doubting Thomas. And the reason why he doubted, though he was with Jesus for three and a half years, and he had great faith in Jesus. But after the resurrection, he doubted whether Jesus was actually alive. The other disciples had seen him, but Thomas had not. And so he said, unless I actually see him in the flesh, unless I'm able to take my fingers and put them in the places where the nails were and where the spear had been, then I'm not going to believe. And Jesus was gracious enough and loving enough to actually appear to Thomas and to dispel his doubt. And so he appeared to him in the flesh and he said, take your finger and put it here in these, these nail marks and uh, put it where the spear is. And then Thomas was able to fall down on his knees and say, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Thomas, you believe because you have seen me, but blessed are those who believe and have not seen. That blessing of Jesus is for you and for me because we have not seen the immortal invisible God the way in which Thomas did. He saw him in the flesh. Often the thing that gets us into trouble with doubt is that we only trust what we see with our eyes. But there are many things that we don't see with our eyes. And I'm going to ask that we just close off our program together with a word of prayer. 
and ask God to give us that kind of faith. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you, Lord, through your Holy Spirit, to give us a heart of belief and dispel all our doubts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.